Okay. So the typical workflow would be once you have this face down, you want it to go ahead and do a roughing process. You can start with a three axis, select horizontal roughing. This is also known as roughing in levels or Z level roughing. You don't have to go ahead and select any solid or surface geometry. Uh, RhinoCam will automatically look at the entire model that you have imported in here or modeled in here and it takes into account the stock that you define to create the areas for roughing. So you can specify a tool for it. We could say this part is uh, fairly small. There's a lot of detail and features in here. Maybe I can go with a quarter inch flat melt, for example, right? To rough yeah. set feet and speeds. You can load it from the tool automatically or you can change the feet and speeds. Uh, clearance is your uh, safety plane for all your transfer moves, non-cutting motion. You can specify your cutting parameters in here, like the tolerance is for roughing. You can specify the cut patterns for you know, core and cavity regions. Step overs can be set. In the cut levels, you can say how fine you want the cutter to step. You can do a percent tool diameter distance or number of levels. For example, I could say I want to go maybe 10% of the tool diameter only. So if I'm using a quarter inch cutter, I'm only stepping down 10%, which is 25 thousandths, right? Or right. if I want to step down 50 thousandths, I can say 0.2 or 25% of the tool diameter. I can use these controls in here. And in cut levels, I can say I don't want to go below a certain Z level, so I can say I want to pick my bottom containment, and that's how far down I want it to go. I don't want to go past that, right? That's okay. the lowest point of the model. I don't want to go past it. I can put a bottom containment in here. Then set my engage and retract parameters, how you want to engage in material when you're ramping in, and how do you want to do it when you're, uh, you know, extending on the side. And you can also fit arcs to your tool paths rather than opening them as linear motions. We can output them as true arcs. And when you pick generate, it's going to compute the roughing tool path. So in this process, it's looking at your part, stock, and computing it. So we are not selecting or specifying any boundaries. We could still contain the tool paths by specifying machining regions and boundaries, which we'll talk about in just a moment. Okay. So here's your roughing path. And it takes into account the entire stock that we had. And you can see it's doing it in levels. And you can look at each of those levels. And those dark blue motions you see on the tool pads are arcs being fitted to it. And the turquoise color or the cyan color are all linear motions. So if I go into the simulate, click play, it shows you a material removal simulation. You can always speed it up right here. It's doing it in levels, each level at a time. I could always do a pause, pick go to end, simulate to end. It gives you the roughing in levels. Now, since I already had roughed down the top by a certain amount, I can skip that for the face. You know, since we did a facing operation to face it down, I can go back into the roughing operation and tell it that I don't want to start at zero. I wanted to start maybe at minus 0.06, right? Okay. Or 70,000, 60 or 70,000. I can start right there. Uh, I can change it to 75,000. So that my first cut will not be until 75,000 because we removed that amount of material. And we can also apply colors for simulation. So it makes it easier for us to see how the material is being cleared out. So you can go to properties. And you can apply a color for each simulation. I could say for the roughing, I would like to apply this color. So now when I go to Simulate tab, the facing is completed. And I'm going to apply based on the operation. I'll select the Play button, and now you can see that the material being removed. The roughing operation can be clearly visible. I'm just doing a pause, Simulate to end. Any questions so far? Not yet. Okay. So now for finishing, we have different ways how we can finish it. Now also for the roughing, if you didn't want to cut all the way around, we can pick a boundary in here to contain or limit the tool paths. So we could go in and select a region. Uh, one of the ways we could do it in Rhino is using uh, in the layers, I can insert a new layer so the boundary can go on a different layer. And Rhino has a command called mesh outline. I can just pick this mesh right here. 
right click or press enter, you can see it creates a nice little outline on the model right there. Okay. So now I can take this outline, um, I can offset this outline boundary a little bit by a small distance. Uh, maybe I could say I want to go maybe by a quarter inch offset or maybe point two hundred thousand and then offset it. So this is going to basically take the curve and offset it. Now if Rhino is uh, unable to offset it to a closed curve, it could be possible there's some self intersections in here. You can see that it's offset into open curve. So Rhino was not able to offset that very effectively. So what we could do is take this curve, we can make a copy of that, and then we can rebuild one of these curves in Rhino to smoothen it out. You can see there is about 2,600 points. The curve is made up of so many you know, point count. So I can simplify it to like just 250 points right there, and then I can offset this. I should be able to offset it nicely. See that, sir? Okay. So the offset is used for defining like a boundary for containment. So in the roughing operation, rather than roughing it over to the entire part, I could pick this as my boundary to contain the pad and generate it. So the tool pad is going to be contained to that area only. You see that? Yep. So if Not you time. wanted to add a facing operation, so I can make a copy of this facing operation in here, and I could select uh, the facing operation to have the extent of the stock that we had defined, which was 8 by 14, so which could be a rectangle that we can define 8 by 14. Now I can create a second facing operation to quickly clear this material out by just picking these two boundaries in here. And then I can select a tool for it, uh, the three quarter inch tool. And then in the roughing, I can specify to do like an offset cut pattern. And I can choose to go from the top, uh, which is gonna be zero, down to the depth, maybe like go down to like you know, half an inch deep, right? And then you you generate that. So in, in one operation, I can basically, you know, make my machining workflow much more efficient. And then this could be our next operation to rough it out in here. Okay. Do you see the benefit of uh, how you can have more precise control on your toolpath? Yep. Okay, so we got the spacing done. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to do some finishing operations with it as well. So we have different types of finishing methods available. Uh, so starting with like a parallel finishing, uh, this would be also similar to what, you know, some systems call it like a planar finishing or, you know, uh, it basically follows the 3D geometry and it can cut in different uh, direction of cut, angle of cut. So either cutting it parallel to the X or Y or any angle like, you know, 45 and stuff like that. So you can pick a tool for it. So typically you would want to go with like a ball mill so if I choose like a, a an eighth inch ball mill for this, or you can even go with like a taper tool. Uh, again, specify the cutting parameters. You can change the angle of cut in here. So if I put it at 45, it's gonna go at a 45 degree to X. So rather than just going back and forth, it'll go at a 45 degree angle. You can control your step over how fine you want it to step. You can put in a Z containment. So you don't wanna cut past that. Or I can say go down to half an inch. And you can also control your uh, step overs, um, specify your clearance. I can skim through, then generate it. So in this process, this could be like a pre-finishing operation or even you know, a finishing operation. You can generate the tool paths in multiple cutting directions. So we have our parallel finishing operation in here. So if you select play, and I didn't change the color for the simulation, but you can see it's you know cutting back and forth following your 3D model. So that's going at an angle of 45. If you take a look at it, looking at it from the top view, it's at a 45 degree cut. Right. 
And then you can always go back and change the angle. So any scalloping that's being left by cutting in one direction, you can always change the direction to cut it from the other orientation. Yeah. So by picking this curve, we just offset. It just gives it enough room for the cutter to get all the way down on the sides. And all I picked was this particular curve boundary. I didn't have to select the entire STL file or the mesh geometry. So you can just pick a boundary to contain your tool pass. Okay. And if you didn't want the cutter to go into this uh, circular region in here, we could have eliminated that by selecting a inner region in here so the cutter would stay between the two. So it, it would know the topology of the geometry, what you selected, so it would stay between the two areas only. Okay. And anytime you want to skip, we can do a pause and select uh, simulated to end. You'll notice that it's going to run through the simulation.